Hello data folks. Thanks for joining me again on this channel for data and IT professionals. We've been exploring many advanced DBT and snowflake topics that are widely used by companies around the world. Along those lines, today we're going to explore the new feature announced by Snowflake that brings DBT right inside Snowflake platform. This is indeed a huge move by Snowflake. The feature is called DBT projects on Snowflake. Today, we'll dive deep into what that really means and take a practical look at how it works. We all know how powerful DBT is for transforming data right inside your data warehouse. But here's the catch. Even though your transformations run in the warehouse, you still need a separate IDE to develop your DBT models, plus a lightweight compute environment to host DBT. DBT Cloud solves these needs but comes with an additional cost, and it requires using another platform beyond your warehouse. Some enterprises take a different approach. They use local IDEs like VS Code for development and Airflow for compute and job orchestration. But that approach requires managing multiple tools and platforms. The recent announcement from Snowflake addresses these gaps. Snowflake's web UI now includes an IDE for developing and deploying DBT code. That means no local IDE or unofficial extensions are needed. You no longer need extra infrastructure to run DBT. Everything executes right within Snowflake itself. You can even connect your Git repository to manage your code. Plus, you can use Snowflake tasks to schedule DBT runs automatically. Pretty cool, isn't it? All right, let's see this in action. To begin with, you've got two options. You can either set up a brand new DBT project or if you already have one, you can connect your existing project and continue your further development work right here in Snowflake. I'll start by showing you how to connect an existing DBT project first. To do that, we'll first set up an API integration for your Git repository. I've given a link in the description with all the commands and code you'll see in this video. We are now ready to pull the existing DBT project straight from Git into Snowflake. Please navigate to projects and then workspaces. Using this arrow, you can switch between workspaces or create a new one as needed. For our case, we'll create a new workspace from the Git repository. I'm going to use OAuth authentication, which lets Snowflake establish connection to Git through browser-based login. You can also use a personal access token if that's your preference. Let's approve this access request. We're all set and ready to create the workspace from the Git repository. All right, the DBT project is now available in your Snowflake UI. This is the DBT project.yaml file, which usually comes from your existing project repository, but it won't include the profile.yaml file, so you'll need to create one. If you've worked with DBT Core before, this file is generally maintained in the user's home directory. But here in Snowflake, you should create it in the same location as your project.yaml file. You do not require to supply password because we are already inside Snowflake, but you should still have a placeholder for user. Another important point to note is that the profile name you have here should match with the profile you configure in project.yaml file. If everything is set up correctly, the toolbar at the top will be activated. You can use this toolbar to run any DBT command you need, like build, test, list, and more. Additionally, you can pass arguments to those commands for more granular control. For example, you might run just a single model or a tag and use plus to include its upstream or downstream dependencies as well. Let's go ahead and run this dbt build command to check the results. Looking at the log, you can see that the transform tables were created successfully in the serving schema. And right here on the DAGs tab, you can see the dbt lineage view, which gives you a clear visual of how all your models are connected. You can deploy your dbt project as a schema level object which opens up even more possibilities. You can manage permissions using grant statements and maintain multiple versions of the same project 
directly within Snowflake. Most of the actions I'm doing here in the UI can also be done using the SQL commands. Furthermore, you can set up scheduled runs, which can reduce the need for a separate workflow orchestration tool like Airflow. Whether it's a manual DBT run or a scheduled one, you can use the query history in the monitoring tab to dive deep into the logs and analyze your runs in detail. The development process is pretty straightforward, just like you do in any IDE. Let's try making a code change and committing it to the Git repository. The changes are saved automatically. We're now ready to push them to the remote Git repository. With this Git integration, multiple team members can work on the same project at the same time in a much more streamlined way. We've pretty much covered everything for connecting an existing project, but I know some of you might not have a DBT project yet and may want to set up a fresh one. Let me quickly show you how that's done. First, please create a new Git repository and add an initial readme file. This step is mandatory because Snowflake doesn't allow you to connect an empty repository. As we did earlier, we'll set up a new workspace from the Git repository. Make sure to close any open files and you should see this screen. This is where you can initialize the DBT project. If you wanna maintain more than one project in this workspace, you can create subfolders here, but I'll leave it empty for now. Please go ahead and choose the details requested here. These selections will be stored in your DBT profile.yaml file. Perfect. We now have a complete DBT folder structure in place. By default, it comes with two dummy models for testing, which is all good. There's an intentional test failure left by DBT, so you can better understand DBT tests. But I'll fix that issue right away to save time. Let's build this DBT project. Perfect. You can now delete these two models and start creating the models you need for your development work. I hope this new feature helps cut down on multiple tools in your company. It makes your development cycle much more smoother. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video, where we'll explore more data technologies. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Thanks for watching.